The Western Conference Finals are set, and on today's episode, we'll talk about the two teams that have most recently been eliminated in the Western Conference in the Edmonton Oilers and the Seattle Kraken and discuss what's coming next for them, and then we will preview the Western Conference Finals, the Vegas Golden Knights going head-to-head with the Dallas Stars. A jam-packed episode coming up on today's Locked On NHL. Your Locked On NHL, your daily podcast on the National Hockey League. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi and hello, hockey fans. Welcome back to the Locked On NHL podcast, Western Conference Tuesdays. I am your host, Dane Lewis, going solo today on this Tuesday, May 16th. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Thank you guys for tuning in to today's episode. For making Locked On NHL your first listen every single day, be sure to subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts, as well as on YouTube. Just search Locked On NHL. Uh, for five days a week, daily upload uh, content covering the National Hockey League, especially now as we're reaching the halfway point of the Stanley Cup playoffs, the Western Conference picture getting a little bit tighter. The NHL in general, we're only down to four teams, two remaining in the Western Conference in the Dallas Stars and the Vegas Golden Knights. But I do want to spend some time today talking about the teams that have recently been eliminated and discussing what went wrong for them in their second round series and what their off seasons might look like. And I, of course, want to start with the team that was eliminated first in round two in the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, And I can't help but feel like many Oiler fans share the sentiment of this is a disappointing end to the season that leaves a bitter taste in the mouth. I imagine many Oilers fans are looking for someone to blame, and I feel like a lot of that blame is being placed on Coach Jay Woodcroft. This is a a team that had aspirations for a Stanley Cup, a team that made it to the conference finals last season. It wasn't a a pretty conference finals for them. They get swept by the eventual champion Colorado Avalanche, but it was a step in the right direction, and now the Oilers are eliminated in round two when it felt like it was a cup finals appearance or bust. And it they made the right moves, it seems, to put themselves in an ideal position. They, of course, had the excellent core of Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisidel. They had some excellent seasons from guys like Zach Hyman, Ryan Nugent Hopkins. And then, you know, they go out and make some moves at the trade deadline, uh, and they pick up a guy like Matthias Ekholm to go alongside Darnell Nurse, Evan Bouchard, uh, had a nice season, even a nice postseason. They go out and get Nick Bukestad from the Arizona Coyotes. They move on from Jesse Pugliarvi with at the trade with the Carolina Hurricanes. It seemed like the appropriate moves were being made from the Edmonton Oilers. Stuart Skinner had a very nice season in net, earning him a Calder finalist nomination, but it somehow all fell apart. And so I understand the idea of wanting to look at the coaching situation and thinking something needs to change because it's hard to look at the player personnel and say that this team could not get the job done because the talent in my mind was there for this team to make it to the Western Conference Finals, if not advance past that and be the Western Conference representation in the Stanley Cup Final. But at the end of the day, the Edmonton Oilers, despite all of the talent that they had on their team, they simply could not get the job done offensively at five on five. We know the Oilers boasted the league's best power play during the regular season, and it was a deadly power play here in the playoffs as well. But if the Oilers weren't on the man advantage, they struggled heavily to score goals, which is just baffling to see because this team, again, loaded with so much talent. Connor McDavid just had a season for the ages in terms of scoring and points. Leon Dreisaitl was as good as we've ever seen him be. And both of those guys at the top of the list for playoff production for points. Connor McDavid actually still leads the NHL in playoffs and points with 20. And Leon Dreisaitl currently at third with 18 points. And Evan Bouchard sitting at fourth 
with 17. The, this was a team that, that had the offensive pieces, but just could not put the puck in the back of the net enough at five on five. And teams like the Vegas Golden Knights eventually learned to play a more disciplined style of hockey that allowed them to commit less penalties and granting the Edmonton Oilers less chances to score on the power play. And, and I'm personally am shocked to see the series in the way it did. Not necessarily the fact that the Golden Knights won. Uh, I This is obviously a deep and talented Vegas Golden Knights team that we'll talk about a little bit later on in the show. But I just expected the Edmonton Oilers, if they were going to lose, to at least extend this series to seven games. But now the question is, what comes next? What does this offseason look like for this Edmonton Oilers organization? What changes need to be made? Well, I think for one, you have to find a way to continue to build around the two superstars because the clock is slowly starting to run out uh, with, with these contracts. And you want to make sure that these guys want to stay even longer once their contracts end. Leon Dreisaitl, two more years on his contract. And Connor McDavid, only three years remaining on his contract after this season. And if you know the Oilers organization doesn't do enough to you know keep them around or keep them happy or keep them believing that they can contend in Edmonton, I can't imagine that, that they'll be excited to stay there long term. And then, of course, you, you need to bolster the roster. You need to extend a few players. Evan Bouchard is an RFA, uh, and he's you know not making a lot of money right now, but I imagine he's going to want a decent amount of money given the way that he produced, especially here in the playoffs. Uh, again, fourth in the NHL in points as a defenseman, uh, leading the way for all defensemen right now at 17. The next closest D-man was Morgan Riley uh, of the Toronto Maple Leafs at 12 points. He's going to want a heavy paycheck, but you don't really have too many other superstar level players needing extensions, but you are losing potentially quite a few guys to free agency. And I think that allows you to make some other moves, whether that be in free agency or in the trade market in order to add more talent around Leon and Connor in order to try and get back to the Western Conference Finals next season. In no way do I think that the Oilers are on a downward trajectory Although this is going to be a long offseason, I imagine, in Edmonton as, again, the, the taste in the mouth is absolutely bitter after a season that feels like it was cut short. And then, of course, you need to look to see if Stuart Skinner is the goalie of the future. And, and if so, bolster that defensive core, get guys like you did with Matthias Ekholm at the trade deadline, and make Stuart Skinner's life a little bit easier in the crease because he, he showed plenty of great flashes. And if you can finally get that goaltending solidified in Edmonton, I think that that's a huge checked box for this team moving forward. Uh, but I'm curious to know your thoughts down below if you're watching on the YouTube channel. And if you're an Edmonton Oilers fan, let me know what you think needs to happen this offseason. What are your expectations for, the, for this Oilers squad moving forward after a disappointing end to the season? Well, from one Pacific team to another, we'll talk about the Seattle Kraken as they lost in Game 7 to the Dallas Stars in Round 2. More on that coming up next. But first, I got to tell you guys about one of today's sponsors, and that is our friends over at Game Time. Buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer deals on last-minute tickets and their best price guarantee, you can stop stressing over the tickets and, get, and start getting hyped for all the fun you'll have. Forget planning months in advance. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the day of the event. You can get exclusive flash deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. The Game Time guarantee means you'll always get the best price if you find tickets in the same section and row for less. Game Time will credit you then 110% the difference. Just download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on NHL for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. A special thank you to all the everydayers out there tuning into Locked On NHL and making us a part of your daily routine as we continue to give you coverage of the NHL playoffs and the offseason that is rapidly approaching. Uh, with the draft, with trades, with free agency, always plenty to talk about in the world of NHL hockey. And the next team we are going to discuss uh, the most recent 
eliminated team, most recently eliminated team from the playoffs here in the NHL in 2023, the Seattle Kraken. They do battle with the Dallas Stars, take them to the very edge in Game 7, but not enough uh, to get the Kraken to their first Western Conference Finals appearance. However, they should still, uh, I believe, hold their heads high after the year that they had. The Kraken absolutely took the NHL world by storm this season. Only the Arizona Coyotes and Montreal Canadiens finished with less points than the Seattle Kraken did in 2021-2022. And so to make the jump from the third worst team by points in the league to being a wild card team and winning a first round playoff series against the defending Stanley Cup champions, that is no small feat. And Dave Hackstall, his coaching staff and his team deserve all the credit in the world for such a, a huge turnaround. I don't think anyone really expected this sort of output from the Kraken. I think we expected them to be better, but maybe not this much better. And they've shown plenty of great signs of life for the organization going forward. And Seattle Kraken fans have plenty to be excited for with this team and with this organization moving forward. And, and things are just going to continue to go their way. They get to host the Winter Classic, of course, this upcoming season. And they're going to be returning most of their key players. Jordan Eberle, Jaden Schwartz, uh, Yanni Gord, all of those guys impactful in the playoffs, especially in the series against the Dallas Stars. They do have a few expiring contracts. Guys like Vince Dunn, do you look to bring him back? He's an RFA at the end of the season. Uh, and then, of course, a few role players as well. Morgan Geeky, Ryan Donato. You have guys like Ty Cartier, who I think have earned their spot on the NHL roster after an impressive NHL debut, an impressive Stanley Cup playoff debut from some of the young players. Uh, and for the Kraken, uh, it feels different than the Edmonton Oilers. It feels like a second-round exit. It's always disappointing to lose in the playoffs, but given the expectations for the Kraken at the start of the season, I have to imagine that they feel pretty satisfied with where things ended and how the outlook for the future is set. The Kraken do have a solid roster, as I know I've talked about at length, uh, I, as I host the Locked On Stars podcast, watching this Kraken team for the past seven games, and even in the regular season, knowing that they have a very solid team, but they lack star power. And I feel like that could really put this team over the edge and take them to that next level if they're able to add that superstar player. And so, of course, the development of prospects like fourth overall pick in 2022, Shane Wright, hopefully an addition like that could help this team once he's fully developed and ready for the NHL stage. But I'd be curious to see what sort of moves the Seattle Kraken make in free agency because they do have, like I said, a good handful of expiring contracts, both on offense and on defense as well. And so, I mean, they're not going to bring every single one of these guys back. They're only going to bring a few of them back. And so they let some guys walk, and they gain a little bit of cap space, and then you can go out and you can make moves in free agency or with trades, and you can bolster this roster, make it even deeper, and potentially even add some star players. Because I really do think that could be a make or break point for the Seattle Kraken team. Uh, and it's very exciting for Kraken fans, knowing that they do have a pretty decent prospect pool in the wings to join what is already a veteran-led group of guys like Eberly Gord. Uh, and so many others. Uh, and, you know, they, I think, also could look to to bolster the goaltending a little bit. Uh, no disrespect to Philip Grubauer, who was terrific in the postseason, especially in that first-round series against the Colorado Avalanche. But I feel like in the regular season, so many of their games came down to goaltending. And a lot of times they lost that goaltending matchup uh, throughout the regular season. And that, potential, and that almost... Uh, helped them miss the postseason and putting them in a wild card spot rather than a top three spot in the Pacific Division. But just like the Edmonton Oilers, if they can get that goaltending situation sorted out and they can have a go to guy, that is going to do wonders for the organization going forward. So I'm very curious to see how the front office and the coaching staff approaches this offseason because I'm sure that they were, you know, hopeful that this would be a successful 22 23 season but I really don't know how many of them were expecting this sort of result in only year two of the franchise. And of course we saw Vegas do something similar a few years ago when they first started making it all the way to the cup finals in their first year. Uh, and so maybe there's a discussion to be had about expansion drafts and things of that nature. But 
I also do think it's a good thing to have these expansion teams show some success early because it does get the fan bases involved and helps bring more eyes to the game, especially in markets that haven't had teams before. And so now we're seeing that in Vegas and we're seeing that in Seattle as well. Seattle fans should be thrilled with the team that they have to watch for the next several seasons. I expect them to be a postseason regular for the next handful of years, especially if they can continue to build around this solid core of guys that are either in their prime or starting to get near the end of it, but can still produce uh, plenty of veteran talent. And even if it's young players, bring in young players and let them sit under guys like Eberly, like Schwartz, Bjorkstrand, Yanni Gord. I mean, these guys have been in the NHL for years and have plenty of knowledge and expertise to pass down to the next generation. And I think guys like Shane Wright are going to benefit from that. And so they need to go out, make some moves in the offseason and add more young talent to this team. And I think they are going to be dangerous coming out of the Pacific Division in the next season. Well, now we're done with the teams that have been eliminated and we have one more series left here in the Western Conference before the Stanley Cup Finals. The Dallas Stars and the Vegas Golden Knights will rematch from the 2020 Western Conference Final. We'll talk about that series coming up next. But first, I got to say thank you to one more sponsor of today's episode, our friends over at Athletic Greens. With one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens' product, AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, nervous system, immune system, energy recovery, focus, and aging. Tons of people out there take some kind of multivitamin, and it's important to choose one with high-quality ingredients that your body will actually absorb. AG1 is a small micro habit with big benefits. It's one thing you can do every single day to take great care of yourself, and right now it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day, and that's it. There's no need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Thank you again for making Locked On NHL your first listen every single day. We're now moving on to talk about the Western Conference Finals. Two teams remain out West. The top-seeded Vegas Golden Knights, winners of the Pacific Division, and the second-place Central Division Dallas Stars. A rematch from the Western Conference Final that we got in 2020. The Stars, of course, winning that series in five games in the bubble after the COVID-19 pandemic shut down the season for several months, we're getting a, a rematch with plenty of juicy storylines heading in. Of course, this is a Pete DeBoer reunion as he last coached in Vegas, was their head coach up till last season. And of course, was the head coach of the Golden Knights when they made their conference finals appearance in 2020. So there's plenty to talk about there with DeBoer, of course, looking for his first Stanley Cup. He's been all over the league. He's coached in Florida. He took the New Jersey Devils to the cup final. He's taken the Sharks to the cup final, took the VGK to the conference final, but still hasn't been able to fully cross the finish line. And now he'll be looking to get one step closer to hoisting that cup against his former team where things did not necessarily end great, if we're being completely honest. I know it was not the cleanest breakup uh, that we've ever seen in the NHL. Not the ugliest either, but... The, the Vegas Golden Knights and Dallas Stars both seem very happy with their new coaches. Bruce Cassidy, of course, coming over from Boston in the summer and has taken this Vegas Golden Knights team to seemingly new heights after the VGK missed out on the playoffs for the first time in their franchise's existence last season. And a big part of that has to do with the coaching, but also the emergence of Jack Eichel. You talk about the Seattle Kraken in need of that superstar player to be the driving force on the team. And Jack Eichel, in my eyes, has been just that for this VGK squad. I mean, they, again, have plenty of good depth pieces, but not really any guys that you would point out and say, this is a superstar player that can lead a franchise to a cup. But Jack Eichel, with six goals and eight assists in 11 games, has been just that for this Golden Knights squad, aided by the players you expect to be helping out. Mark Stone, Chandler Stevenson, Jonathan Marcheseau, 
They they go out and they make the right moves at the trade deadline. They add Ivan Barbashev, who won a cup with the St. Louis Blues back in 2019. And even with all the adversity that this team has faced, they've continued to find ways to win games and just look nearly unbeatable at times. It seems like their goalie situation has been a revolving door uh, with guys like Logan Thompson starting the year. He gets injured. Laurent Brossois gets injured. You have Jonathan Quick on the roster, but you haven't used him yet in the playoffs. And now you're relying on Aiden Hill, who I say you say that as if it's a bad thing, but he's been excellent. He's played five games. He's gotten three starts. He's three and one with a 934 save percentage and a 219 goals against average. I'm sure a lot of VGK fans were nervous when they saw Laurent Brossois go down against the Edmonton Oilers. But then Aiden Hill comes in and delivers some excellent performances in order to push this team to the Western Conference Finals. And he'll need to be big again as he's looking to face the Dallas Stars, who have one of the best offenses here in the playoffs, leading the way in goal scoring uh, for the entire league in the postseason, headlined by guys like Rope Hintz, who is second in the NHL in player points, only behind Connor McDavid, uh, who now can no longer score points in the postseason. And Rope Hintz played hero in Game 7 for the Dallas Stars against the Seattle Kraken, scoring the first goal, Late in the second period, the, the game had been deadlocked at 0-0. Really started to feel like the first goal was going to mean the team that scored it was going to be the winning team, and that would be the case. Rope Hintz makes a nice play to steal the puck from Jamie Alexiak and buries it one-on-one -on -one against Philip Grubauer. He now has nine goals, 19 points. Joe Pavelski has eight goals in eight games played this postseason. He missed pretty much that entire first-round series against the Minnesota Wild but has bounced back with excellence. He's another guy like Pete DeBoer who has yet to win a Stanley Cup, but knows what it takes to get there and is going to do everything in his power to make sure that the team is prepared to get to that point. And really, the biggest question from the Dallas Stars side of things is can they get production from Jason Robertson? And you may say, what do you mean can they get production from Jason Robertson? He's second on the team in points. And you're right, he does have 12 points, but 10 of those points are assists, and both of those two goals came on the power play. Jason Robertson has not been an effective goal scorer here in the playoffs, and that has been the expectation for him. He scored nearly 50 goals this season. He's had back-to-back 40-goal -back seasons, and he's only in his third NHL season, yet he hasn't found a way to translate that goal scoring to the playoffs. And he's getting plenty of opportunities. He's getting the looks, but he is incredibly snake-bitten at the moment, he really is just at a point where he needs to see a puck go in. And then I really do think that he'll get back to being his normal self. And the assists are nice, especially you look at game five against the Seattle Kraken. Jason Robertson, an incredibly effective player, dishing out really nice assists, setting up his teammates for goals. And he can do that fine. And that's a good weapon for the Stars to have with that top line of Robertson, hence Pavelski. But Jason Robertson is truly at his best, and the Stars are a nearly unbeatable team when Jason Robertson is on his game and scoring goals at an, an incredibly high rate. And it's not just Jason Robertson. Jake Ottinger had a little bit of a rough series against the Seattle Kraken, certainly not his best stretch of seven games, but he did just enough to help get the Stars over the finish line and get them to the halfway point of the Stanley Cup playoffs. I think that's going to be a, a crazy fun storyline to follow. Jake Ottinger, a guy who is recognizable, guys, people expect him to play well after what he did in the playoffs last year against the Calgary Flames and the regular season that he had versus Aiden Hill, who, who has come in and delivered some wild performances, but also been kind of all over the league and never has really been a superstar caliber goalie. But now he's in the Western Conference Finals and the expectations are heavily placed upon him to deliver some lights out performances against one of the best offenses remaining in the NHL and one of the best offenses in the league all season. Hence, Robertson, Pavelski, Sagan, Ben, Wyatt Johnston, the 20-year-old rookie who has four goals in 13 playoff games. I mean, this is not an easy task to stop, but it's also not going to be easy for Jake Ottinger to face a lot of those names that I mentioned earlier. I expect this to be a, a, an explosive electric series between two teams uh, with different motivations, different motivations for wanting to get to the Stanley Cup Finals, but both of them, desperately wanting some vengeance there because the only time the Golden Knights have been there, they've lost, and the Dallas Stars haven't won one 
since 1999. And the last time they were there, they also felt like it was a bitter taste in the mouth, a bitter defeat at the hands of the Tampa Bay Lightning. Two teams filled with guys who have plenty to prove in their careers. It's going to be one excellent series. I expect it to go six or seven games. And of course, I am a little bit biased as the host of Locked On Stars, but I do think that the Dallas Stars have what it takes to win this series. Again, I'll say stars in seven, but let me know if you're watching on YouTube in the comment section down below what your expectations are for the Western Conference Finals, who wins, and who represents the Western Conference in the Stanley Cup Finals. But I want to thank you for tuning in to today's episode of Locked On NHL, for making us your first listen every single day. If you want more information on me or the Dallas Stars, you can search for the Locked On Stars podcast on YouTube or wherever you find your podcast at. You can also find me on Twitter at Dane double underscore Lewis. Be sure to tune in back here next week as we'll be discussing everything that's happened in the Western Conference Finals through the first handful of games. And then we'll also be taking a look at some other teams around the conference and the offseason moves that are being made. Maybe start to talk a little bit of free agency and trade talk. You never know. You never know what's going to happen uh, once teams finish their seasons. And I'm sure the Edmonton Oilers and the Seattle Kraken might have some storylines for us as well as all the other teams out west. But I hope you guys enjoy your Tuesday. Take care of yourselves. And we'll see you back here next week for another episode of Locked On NHL Western Conference Tuesdays.